hello right let's go today is on buffer solutions let me just Norton has decided to be a beast and start mashing up everything on my drive so let's get rid of that boom 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 yeah today I'm looking at buffer solutions so uh, what's a buffer well, we'll find out in a second so let me just bring myself in okay all right all right <clears throat> so today we're looking at buffer solutions let me just check mic check yep 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 <laughs> <sighs> what's a buffer well it's certainly not this these are two buff people um, yeah get your hands up my ph so it's got to do with ph buffer solutions are able to resist ph or I wouldn't say they can resist pH. They can resist acids and bases and prevent changes in the pH. Now, they can only resist small amounts of acid or small amounts of base. Examples of buffer, well, your blood is a buffer solution. So if you eat something or something acid gets into your blood or something basic gets into your blood, the pH of your blood will not change by a lot. Obviously, if you have too much acid or too much alkaline, um, then your pH will change by a significant amount and the buffer will no longer work. But a buffer solution can resist small changes in the amount of acid and base and therefore prevent the pH changing dramatically. And of course, in biology, this is vital in things like enzymes where they have a three-dimensional structure and they're reliant on being in a very specific pH. So we're going to look at buffers. Uh, first of all, we're going to have a go at a question. So... Um, on acids, just to remind us how to calculate the pH of weak acids. So let's have a go at the question on weak acids. Question, tell me what you think about... Chemistry. Come on, let's do this. Let's do it. Yep, let's do it. So let's see how you guys are with your weak acid calculations. So get yourself into this one, get your scientific calculator out. Uh, make sure you've got a pen and paper and a scientific calculator when you go through these lives. Um, that's important so you can have a go at the questions. If you're watching this, if you're not watching this live, uh, then you can just pause the video and you can forward through to the working out. If you want to see the working out or you can forward through to the answer of the question, but you can definitely pause it and have a go before I start waffling through the working out. Now, occasionally in my lives, very rarely I have to say, but occasionally I do make a mistake on some calculations. If you watch it on the rewatch, I will always put in the description if there is a mistake on a calculation. I think I've, it's in all my lives I've had like two times that's happened. So um, watch out for that. Um, if you're getting an answer that's different from mine. Okay, sometimes I do a calculator error or something like that. So, A-levels are very difficult. This is a notorious part of A-level that's difficult. If you're aiming for A or A-star, you need to have a handle on buffers. Now, I can't possibly cover all the calculations that you come across with buffer solutions, all the various styles for AQA, Edexcel, and OCR. I'm going to cover quite a few tonight, different difficult buffer questions I'm uh, going to go through the theory of buffers and then go through some of the questions on buffers, but I can't cover all of them. If you come across one you can't do, message me. You can email me at let get, uh, let's get to the marks at gmail.com or you can drop a message on the video. And basically, if you put a link to the exam paper or the question you can't do on buffer solutions, then I can do a little video on it with a walkthrough. Often you'll check the mark schemes. You won't understand how they got to the answer so they often won't have a breakdown by breakdown um, explanation the other thing to point out is that you may be in possession of one of these I use these this is the OCR a level chemistry book CGP very common everybody has one of these or most students have one of those at a level it's got a rocking horse falling on me um, or you could have the AQA one um, but what you'll find is in things like buffer solutions um, and many other areas, they don't cover all of the stuff. So they will give you a really nice explanation of what a buffer solution is, and they'll give you a very, very simple calculation, but they won't cover all the variations, and they won't cover many of the ways that buffers turn up. So you can revise from your CGP and think you're ready to get an A or A star. You're not. 
uh, you're not going to be ready if you haven't done all the past paper practice questions because there's so many variations on the way they can ask the questions uh, that will stump you and prevent you getting maximum marks. So the CGPs are really, really useful tools, excellent tools for revision. I use them all the time, but you have to be aware of their limitations. In many of the topics, they don't give examples of the different styles of questions that are likely to come up. And uh, so you won't get an A or A star if you just purely use the CGP for A level. All right, let's crack on. And this is just a, this isn't a buffer calculation. This is a weak acid calculation, which I've gone through in one of my lives before. So let's crack on and have a go with this. Yeah, sometimes I waffle a little bit. So, you know what I mean? Like, um, let's get on with it. You better move on or else. Okay, point taken. Let's go. So, question about acids and bases. Calculate the pH of a 0 0.150 mole per decimeter solution of ethanoic acid at 25 degrees. 25 degrees in Kelvin. Do you know the answer? What's 25 degrees in Kelvin? Well done if you got it right. 25 degrees in Kelvin is 298K. Boom! Awesome. So, yeah, 298K, that's what Kelvin is. Um, yeah, for 25 degrees if you're doing your conversions. Give your answer to two decimal places. You'll be surprised how many people miss out on this in exams. At A level, especially, watch out for that. That's going to cost you a whole mark. You don't want to lose out on that. Um, We've been given the Ka. Now, you should be able to remember off by heart the expression for um, weak acids. So if you can, let's go through it. Um, and if you can check your answer, obviously, here. So Ka is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's just put A minus algebraic for the conjugate base. And let's put... HA as an algebraic expression of an acid. So that is my expression for Ka relating the concentration of the weak acid, the hydrogen ions, and the hydroxide ions, or the conjugate base, sorry. Right, let's rearrange that to find the pH. So in order to find the pH, do you remember what pH stands for? It's the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So what we need to do is find the hydrogen ion concentration and then we can convert that into the pH. So I need to rearrange this expression to find the hydrogen ion concentration. And by now you should remember that there's a simplified way we can do that. And the reason I'm going through a weak acid uh, calculation in this buffers lesson is because there's an assumption we can make with weak acids that we can't make with buffers. Okay, so I really want to point that out because we use the same Ka expression for buffers and for weak acids. But I can do the square of the hydrogen ion concentration. And the reason I can say it's squared is because the hydrogen ion concentration and our algebraic A minus here, they are equal to each other. Okay, you have the identical amount of conjugate base and the identical amount of hydrogen ions for each molecule of the acid that breaks down. So we can just write that as H plus squared. On, I can't do that when we get into buffers. I'm not allowed to rearrange the Ka expression in this way. So this is why I wanted to work through this first of all. So there's step one. We change it like that. Now, how do I make my hydrogen ions the subject? Well, for those of you who are doing your maths, you know you can do this dead easy. Uh, you're going to times both sides by the acid, and that's going to leave us with Ka um, times the acid concentration. And that's going to equal hydrogen ion concentration squared. Okay, well, I want to get rid of that square. How can I get rid of the square? I can square root both sides. So if I square root both sides, that gets rid of that there. And I just square root that there. And now what I can do is enter all that data in and find out what the answer is. So I want to square root. Boom, where are we? We want to square root the Ka, which is 1.74 um, times 10 to the minus 5. Um, 
Yeah, that's ethanoic acid. That one, you get used to seeing that Ka a lot because that's ethanoic acid's Ka and at room temperature, you're going to have loads of questions where you're using that Ka, funnily enough. So, and we're going to times that by 1.50 mole dm minus 3. Sorry about the caps. Um, don't really need those on. And then we're going to square root that answer and that's going to give us the hydrogen ion concentration, which means we're going to pick up a couple of marks for that. So let's get on with that. So let's square root bracket 1.74. Go to the bottom of the calculator and hit the 10x button um, to the minus 5 times 0 0.150. Close bracket and hope my calculator doesn't screw with me. And... Um, my hydrogen ion concentration apparently is 0 0.0016. So hopefully everyone got something like that. Again, sometimes if you've messed your calculator up, your, your mode is in the wrong place. So, um, yeah, this is 1.6 to times 10 to the minus 3. Now, what I want to do with that, remember how to work out the pH. So, can you remember how to calculate pH? You might not remember, but uh, if you can remember how to calculate pH, what is it? It's the minus log the hydrogen ion concentration. So, what we want to do is we want to find the minus button on our calculator, press that. Then we want to find the log button, press that, and then just enter this number here. And we're hoping for a weak acid pH so let's see what we get and then we do our common sense does it make sense hopefully okay okay yeah so if I go if we minus log doing my uh, Robert De Niro impression, the hydrogen ion concentration, which is um, supposed to be a square bracket, uh, which is this, you should get 2.79. Uh, you could round that up to 2.80, whatever, two decimal places. And this would score you three marks in an exam. The pH, say to ourselves, that's an acidic pH. So we've most probably got that correct. Boom. Let's move on. Um, let's get into buffers. So I just wanted to go over that. I just noticed that my face is over part of that expression there, which doesn't help, does it? Ah, dear, oh dear, Tom, you idiot. Right. Let's zing on. Right. So now I'm going to go into the theory of buffer solutions. What is a buffer solution? Kind of had that stupid image of the body, the male and female bodybuilder. Of course, people use that expression, oh, they look buff, man, or whatever. Yeah, they got muscles. But actually, buffer solutions are, in chemistry, they're solutions which resist a change in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. And here's our definition. So buffer solutions resist changes in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. Um, now, we're gonna. there's two types of buffers you have to know about in A-level chemistry. You have to know about acid buffers and basic buffers or base buffers. Okay, so acid buffers we're going to deal with first. And acid buffers contain two, two chemicals. A weak acid, like ethanoic acid. I'm going to be talking about ethanoic acid a lot in this um, explanation of buffers. But it could be any weak acid, methanoic acid, or any other type of weak acid. So we're looking at uh, a weak acid is in your buffer solution, but you also need the salt of the weak acid. So you could have something like ethanoic acid, and then the salt of ethanoic acid is sodium ethanoate, the sodium salt of ethanoic acid. You could have magnesium ethanoate or a different um, metal ion connected to the ethanoate ion. But in this situation, I'm going to be talking about uh, ethanoic acid as my weak acid and sodium ethanoate as my salt of the weak acid. Sometimes we can say it's the salt of the conjugate base. So the conjugate base, depending on which exam board you're doing, you have to know about conjugate bases. And a conjugate base is when the acid dissociates, 
it forms a conjugate base that can accept a hydrogen ion and go back, reverse back into the acid. So we'll look at that. So um, I'll give you a little example of that. So here I'm drawing ethanoic acid. Let me just check my mics on. I'm always paranoid. That's why I'm looking down, honestly, uh, just checking that my mic's on because uh, I have had that live I did on Orbitals where my mic wasn't on. Now, I might for speed not include the AQ symbol. Now, aqueous, when we're dealing with acids, um, you're always going to have AQ knocking about. So watch out for that. So ethanoic acid should have an AQ symbol. Can't be bothered. So I'm going to skip that. But in your exam, don't skip it. This is the conjugate base of ethanoic acid. And that is ethanoate ions okay and I'm also going to have hydrogen ions so remember that a weak acid only partially dissociates so this is my representation of that now let's check out this buffer solution over here okay this is a buffer solution what does the buffer solution contain well it contains ethanoic acid and it contains ethanoate ions what's the purpose of that if that's my solution and someone tries to add alkali, which is hydroxide ions, or they add a base, which when it reacts will release hydroxide ions in solution. So if I have hydroxide ions added, i.e. base added to my buffer solution, guess what? I've got this stuff here, which is ethanoic acid. It will absorb those hydroxide ions. Okay, so the ethanoic acid will react with those hydroxide ions and absorb them. If someone adds an acid, to my buffer solution, then the hydrogen ions from the acid that would change the pH get absorbed by the ethanoate ions. So you've got two things in your solution, one that can counter acids and absorb acids or absorb the hydrogen ions from acids, and one that can absorb the hydroxide ions released from bases. So you can counter a change in the pH going up towards 14 when a base is added, and you can counter any changes in the pH decreasing the pH when acids are added and hydrogen ions are released. Now, this reaction, you'd think, well, I can just put ethanoic acid in there and it's going to break down to give me ethanoate ions. We can't do that because although if I have one million of these ethanoic acid molecules, remember this is a weak acid, I probably only have one or two ethanoate ions. Now, that means that yeah this this if I just put ethanoic acid in here I'm gonna have millions of ethanoic acid molecules and only a few ethanoate ions so I can counter bases that are added but I can't absorb hydrogen ions when someone adds an acid so I need to get another source of these ethanoate ions I can't rely on this ethanoic acid releasing those so although this equation looks like I would have lots of ethanoate ions ethanoate ions and ethanoic acid I won't it will only give me lots of ethanoic acid so I actually need to add the salt of the acid and I'm going to show you that in a second so we've got a little explanation here which you can read through this is if you're asked how a buffer works so it's just basically saying um, what the acid does and what the base does so let's move on right so here is my equation um, just to show you that when I add ethanoic acid some of it will break down a very small amount it will partially dissociate in solution to release hydrogen ions and ethanoate ions but i need to get uh, lots of ethanoate ions so what we do here is we add the salt of the ethanoic acid which is sodium ethanoate notice this arrow here what does this solid arrow going to the right mean ask yourself what that solid arrow means well done you probably got that right Boom. yeah that solid arrow that actually means full dissociation so it fully breaks down right um, into ethanoate ions so if I have a million sodium ethanoate which is the salt if I have a million of those I'm going to get a million ethanoate ions there's going to be no salt left it's going to purely break down into ethanoate ions and sodium ions now that's great because what we want in our buffer solution is tons of acid to absorb any hydroxide ions that are added and we want tons of ethanoate ions to absorb any hydrogen ions that are released when acids are added now my buffer can counter any acid or base added because it's got um it can absorb either so if someone adds hydroxide ions 
right to this solution of mine they put a little bit of alkali in it my solution will say no the acid in the solution will react with the hydroxide ions forming water right so it's basically not allowing the pH to change by much it's not perfect you will get a little pH change which we'll come on to with the questions now if someone adds hydrogen ions guess what I've got millions of ethanoate ions that can react with those hydrogen ions and basically prevent them from change lowering the pH so they're not going to change the pH either although again as I say they resist but they don't stop a change in the pH so they only will the pH will change slightly but not as much as it would have if it wasn't a buffer solution so it's really important that if you're asked how to produce a buffer solution an acidic buffer solution you know that you need a weak acid and a salt of the weak acid okay because we we need the source of ethanoate ions has to come from a salt because a salt will fully fully dissociate so if I have one mole of sodium ethanoate I'm going to get one mole of ethanoate ions they're all going to break up to ethanoate ions whereas if I have one mole of ethanoic acid remember after dissociation and equilibrium we say you've still got one mole of ethanoic acid that's how few of them turn into ethanoate ions so you basically got almost zero ethanoate ions when you put with ethanoic acid so I need the salt and I need the weak acid great well if you've understood all of that and you've kept up so far uh, I think you deserve a round of applause so well done because buffers is one of the hardest topics in chemistry so give yourself a clap on the back if you're still here <laughs> Alright guys, we're into the other type of base now. This is the uh, the other type of buffer. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting confused. All these uh, acids and bases can get you a little bit confused. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. This is a basic buffer. Base, base, base. How low can you go? Yeah, as opposed to an acid buffer. So let's get into this one. It's a very similar principle to the last one. These aren't as common in exam questions, but um, yeah, they're not as common, but it is possible they'll ask you on these. So um, what do basic buffers contain? They contain a weak base. And guess what? And the salt of the weak base. So it's exactly the same. And it's an acid buffer contains a weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. A basic buffer contains a weak base and the salt of the weak base. So if we look here, you probably know, oh my gosh, I just spat on my hand. Um, you probably know what this molecule here is. What molecule is that? You'll know from your GCSE days. Yeah, so um, that's ammonia. But I bet you don't know what the NH4 plus molecule is. If you do, you're a cool dude. <laughs> Or a cool lady for that NH4 plus is ammonium ions so um, what we want in our basic buffer I want tons of ammonia and tons of ammonium ions right I want both lots of ammonia and lots of ammonium ions why is that well if someone starts adding acid to my basic buffer have a look here the hydrogen ions that are released from the acid they're the dangerous thing that's going to change the pH those hydrogen ions they're going to lower that pH um, well they're going to get absorbed by the ammonia the ammonia is going to go come here I'll form ammonium um, and if you add hydroxide ions guess what the ammonium NH4 plus ions will react with the hydroxide ions and they'll form water and so again they're going to resist that change in pH they're going to reduce the chance of the pH changing by a lot when you add an acid or an alkali now we have the same problem as we do with weak acids weak bases partially dissociate so my ammonia great that's going to absorb any acid because it can accept the hydrogen ions that's going to take out the change that an acid would do but 
I need a lot of ammonium ions and I ain't getting that from this equilibrium because this equilibrium is far to the left. So what I need to do here is get myself a salt of ammonia, something like ammonium chloride, like this, right? NH4Cl. Now it's going to fully dissociate in solution. So I can write plus H2O or I can put AQ, but I'm being lazy and speeding up here. Uh, don't want you watching me tapping away. Um, yeah, so basically that's going to fully dissociate. So again, if I have one mole of ammonium chloride, I'm going to end up with one mole of ammonia. So when I make my buffer, I want a source of ammonium ions. That is going to be the ammonium chloride, which will fully break down, releasing basically crap loads of ammonium ions. And I want a source of ammonia, which can absorb any acids added. And I just add ammonia. So if I have one mole of ammonia, we can assume that the equilibrium concentration of ammonia is also one mole, as it very, this equilibrium lies so far to the left that there's hardly any ammonium ions provided by that. And so these are the two main things I want and you do need to know these two equations for both the both for the weak acid and for for the acid buffer sorry and for the basic buffer we're going to need to know that these equations if we get a five marker asking us explain to explain how how we're going to produce our buffer solution we need these equations of the salt fully dissociating whether it's a basic salt that's going to form a base um <clears throat> Sorry, or whether it's um, uh, the salt of a weak acid or whether it's the salt of a weak, ba um, weak base, they're both going to fully dissociate. So we need to be able to show that in an equation with this arrow. And then for our weak base or our weak acid, we need to use the reversible symbol and be able to represent that. So you do need to know those off by heart. <sighs> there we go. I didn't have to spend all that time typing it out. OK, and this is just a little explanation here. This is saying if someone adds an acid, the EQ, what do I mean by EQ? I mean the equilibrium. So if someone adds an acid, the equilibrium will shift to the right. Okay, why will it shift to the right? Because these NH3 molecules will absorb the hydrogen ions and become ammonium. So therefore, the concentration of ammonium ions will go up. And so the equilibrium will shift to the right. And that's, we can also, in our explanations of how buffers work, we can use this terminology from Le Chatelier's principle or Chatelier's to explain a shift to the right or left. If someone adds a base to my basic buffer, the equilibrium shifts to the left. So if they add a base, what's going to happen here is these ammonium ions are going to react with the hydroxide ions from their base and form ammonia. So I'm going to get an increase in the concentration of ammonia, so the equilibrium will shift to the left. And so that's how the buffer works. And you need to know those explanations with regards to equilibria. The um, When you're dealing with the weak acid, it's the opposite way around than these than for this. Okay. Right. Now, if you have got the hang of calculating the weak acids and rearranging that, you'll know that the equation you need for weak acids and for buffers is the same it's just a little different okay and I'll explain that so can you remember the Ka expression well the Ka expression if I did it for this particular reaction and I don't use an algebraic form if I use algebraic I can use um, actually let's use algebraic it's easier isn't it so um, if I use hydrogen ions and I multiply them by uh, A minus. Now the A minus is the ethanoate ions here. Okay, so normally we put reactants over products, right? And HA you might be wondering what is HA? Well, HA is over here. It's the acid. So we put the reactants on top of the products, and that equals my Ka, and that's my expression for weak acids. Now, normally with weak acids, do you remember what we can assume with weak acids? We normally assume, hopefully I'm not writing over my face here. I probably am. Yeah, you idiot, Tom. We can normally do this, right? We can normally assume that uh, we can just square the hydrogen ions over HA. Now, this is a really important point. You can't do this with buffers, okay? You can't do that. 
that is incorrect with buffers. So you need to know that simplification with weak acids. But when you're calculating the pH of a buffer solution, you can't use that simplification. And the reason being is, whereas with the weak acid, our H plus has come from the breakdown of these ethanoic acid molecules and the A minus has come from these ethanoate molecules, that's not the case with the buffer. With the buffer, the hydrogen ions have come from the weak acid, but the A minus has actually come from our salt. Do you remember we added a salt that broke down to make the conjugate base, the ethanoate ions? The ethanoate ions in our buffer calculation are coming from the salt. So we can't just um, assume these two are equal. They're not. Great. Now I've cleared that up. How do I rearrange this equation then, bearing in mind that I can't simplify H plus and A minus into H plus squared? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply. We want to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So we're going to multiply Ka by HA like that. And this is your equation for buffers. So we're going to go Ka times HA. And then I want to divide um, by A minus. And that it's going to give you H plus. It's no square rooting with this one. You've got no square root involved like we have with weak acids. So, and sometimes I would say the biggest mistake uh, people make in the simple mistake is they do reactants over products. With this one, it's um, your acid is on top and your salt, you can think of it as your salt. It's really the, um, when your salt dissociates, it's the conjugate base of the acid. The ions of the salt, when it breaks down, are underneath the acid there, okay? So it's a little bit different than the normal weak acid expression. So this is just showing you how that all works. This would be if it was a weak acid. So this was the point I was making. You can't do this. So um, just talk to you through that. You can't do this one with buffers. Um, so, and this is just showing you those equations to why. We can't do this with buffers because um, we're getting these salt ions, right? The ions from the breakdown of the salt and these hydrogen ions. So they are not the same. I might have two moles of salt and I might have one mole of ethanoic acid. So these are not going to be the same. Um, I can't assume they're the same. So we can't do the um, H+. plus. So h plus squared so we can't do that when we're dealing with buffers um so over here this is our what i've just already written out but here i'm using i'm not using h a and a minus here i'm using the actual acid and the salt that i've been given in the equation now there's an assumption that we make with this so there is an assumption that we make with buffers and you could be asked in an exam what's the assumption made when using buffers so we have an uh, assumption and if you know what the assumption is then you're a bit of a hero um so you know what i mean um if you know what the assumption is you've smashed it so well done you absolutely smashed it. Okay. Now, the assumption when we're dealing with um, buffers is that our salt or the concentration of salt is equal to the conjugate base basically what I'm saying is we assume that if I have one mole of this uh, one mole this is the crustiest writing ever if I have one mole per decimeter of that then I also have one mole per dm minus three of this why do we make that assumption well they're supposed to fully dissociate in reality not all of the salt might dissociate 
because although it should all dissociate, there might be other factors, meaning that some of the salt molecules don't dissociate. But this is an assumption we have to make when calculating the pH of weak buffers, um, because we don't know the concentration of the ethanoate ions here. But if I'm given that the ethanoic, if the sodium ethanoate, which is this molecule here, if I'm told that this is two mole per decimeter, I assume it's fully dissociated and I will have two moles per decimeter of ethanoate ions. And I need to make that assumption in order to do this calculation. So be aware, you have to know about that assumption. Right, let's get on with the calculations because I've spent half an hour at least waffling about the theory. So let's get down to the calculations. Okay, now buffer calculations are extremely hard. So um, at points, um, doing things like buffers, when you're aiming for an A or you're aiming for an A star, you can actually get quite depressed when you're revising buffers because they're a very, very hard topic. The one I like, the, I would say the three or four hardest parts of A-level chemistry is buffers. So um, you may be feeling like I can't handle the stress no more, dog. These damn A-levels. So you might be feeling like that when you're doing buffer calculations. But what you've got to remember, as hard as buffers are, um, if you put the work in, and again, watching my lives will help you uh, when it comes to revision, making sure that you've done tons and tons of past papers so you've seen all the different variations. Like I say, I couldn't possibly go, I'd need about five hours to go through all the different variations of buffer calculations they could do for the different exam boards. So the content is the same for the different exam boards, but the style of the questions is slightly different from OCR, AQA and Edexcel. So I've got a mix of questions coming up from different exam boards. The style is slightly different for them. But at the end of the day, um, there are so many different variations of buffer calculations that you just got to do as many as you can. I may do another video of just pure going through buffer problems and, and that, but it is one of the hardest topics. Now, if you want to get an A or A star at A level, you 150% need to be putting in from now September. So you're either in year 12 or year 13. You need to be putting in five hours a week. If you can't do that, you, you know, if you can't take the heat, you need to get out of the kitchen. Now, some people might have a weekend job. That's fine. Some people might be in a situation where they can't put that five hours in for chemistry A level a week after that's not including your lessons in school that's after your lessons in school but if you can't do that you can't expect yourself to get an ara star and you can't make up for it in the revision period you have to be doing that right from the start and i mean if you start that in year 13 um it could be difficult because you may be behind your target but you can catch up with five hours extra a week whether you do two hours on a saturday two hours on a sunday and pick one night of the week to do one hour for chemistry and yeah if you've got three a levels or four a levels it starts to get really hard but remember that a in a level stands for advanced you'd be really shocked you have to ask yourself you'd be really really shocked if you took a course that was called advanced and you only had to do an hour a week to get the top grade. Would that really be an advanced course? No. Think about GCSE. The G stands for General Certificate of Education, right? So if you're being told this is the advanced course, right, and you think that you can do an A level and you think that you can get an A or an A star without doing an advanced level of work, then you're bonkers. So you need to make sure you're putting in five hours per A level. Obviously, I'm biased and say five hours for biology and chemistry each, but you need to be doing really five hours for each of your A levels. And that's why it's known as an advanced A level. It doesn't mean it's bad to get a C grade, a D grade or an E grade in A level. You can be really hyper successful even if you've done that. But if you're one of the people that's sitting there thinking, I have to get an A or I need an A star to go to uni to do this particular course, then there's no two ways around it. You've got to put the shift in and you've got to do five hours a week extra on top of the work you do in school. Cool. And that's from the exam board. That's not from me being a D head. That's from the exam board. That's what they recommend. Anyway, enough with that. Let's get into some of these dirty buffer calculations. OK, now this one I've ripped out the CGP book and I just want to show you this is just to show you. So those of you at home using your CGP, relying on your little A level CGP book. Listen, I rely on it all the time. It's a brilliant resource. But for those of you that are just relying on it, let me show you the difference. So this is a three mark buffer calculation. This is the same question they give you in the OCR and the AQA CGP. So um, 
<clears throat> this is the exact same question from the CGP. And I just want to show you how absolutely simple the CGP questions are compared to the real exam questions. So let's have a little look at this. So calculate the pH of a buffer solution that contains 0.4 mole per decimeter of methanoic acid and 0.6 mole per decimeter of sodium methanoate, where the Ka is that. Come on now. I've never seen a question as easy as that on buffers in my whole time, 25 years of teaching A-level chemistry. I've never seen a question as easy as that. So if you rely on the CGP, of course you're going to get into the exam and be like, what the fudge? So... The textbooks don't have all the variations. You have to hit the exam papers and the past papers to, to get all the variations. Let's go through it anyway. The reason I wanted to put this up because you will still get some marks if you screw up your buffers question and you just kind of followed this method, you'll still get some marks. So first of all, we need to, um, well, I put another question here, which is write the two equations that take place in the formation of the buffer solution. So... Um, okay, I'm going to just zing this one from the start. Right, so let's do this first of all, just so that you can see what's up. So methanoic acid, by the way, feel free to stop me when I screw it up and uh, get the formula wrong. So methanoic acid, CH00H, right? Um, yeah, I could write plus H2O or AQA. Uh, AQA? Oh my God, I'm going mad. AQ. So my methanoic acid is going to break down into, do you know the name of the conjugate base of methanoic acid? I'm going to go through the really hard buffer calculations as well. So anyone know the name of the conjugate base here? What is this thing called? If this is methanoic acid, what must that be called there? Well done if you got it right. It's methanoate ions. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so they're methanoate ions, and that's what you're going to get uh, when methanoic acid dissociates. Okay, I think methanoic acid is actually an even stronger acid, and you can tell that by the Ka. I think it's Ka at the same temperature is greater than the Ka of ethanoic acid. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> but um, Right, so we've got methanoate ions breaking down. Of course, this wouldn't give us a buffer. I need to add my salt of methanoic acid. Let's stick to boring old... Oh, no, they have they've written sodium methanoate in the question. So they're, now, um, when we write sodium methanoate... Okay. Technically, there's a minus there, right? Because uh, the ethanoate ions have... And there's a plus here. That kind of helps you. But understand how they bond together but i'm going to get rid of the minus and the plus so that's sodium methanoate now this is a full dissociation so you need to draw this arrow okay and this is actually what is supplying those methanoate ions because i'm not going to get a lot from the acid so um <clears throat> sorry there we go and by the way this is all aq so I'll be putting brackets next to all of this and it's AQ. Right, have I given myself any room for the working out? No, but it's quite easy working out. So let's go through. We need to rearrange that Ka equation. Okay. So Ka, we're going to rearrange that. Um, yeah. I'll go through the rearrangement. Here we go. Let's. Do, uh, all right. So first of all, I start with reactants. I'm just going to go through the rearrangement. You might be like, oh, so get on with it, right? Um, let me go through it. So you've got the reactants here. You always start with your reactants over your products before you rearrange. And then you're going to put your acid underneath. Gosh, I wish I'd just done. Um, it's painful watching me do this. Jeez. Okay. There we go. Oh, shrink my face. Shrink the face. Shrink the face. Probably a good thing. Right. So here is my Ka equation. I need to make H the subject. So if I want to make H the subject, I've got to multiply the ethanoic acid, methanoic acid at the bottom here by Ka. Multiply both sides. And then I'm going to need to divide um, 
both sides by the the ions of the salt, so the methanoate ions. Some people call it a conjugate base of the acid, but there we go, whatever. Okay, so the rearrangement is going to be, let's get rid of, oh, yeah, go on. All right, let's do that. Right, Ka times the acid. It doesn't matter if you times the Ka by the acid first and then divide. I mean, personally, I do the methanoic acid over the top of the salt the CHOO minus. Why do I keep calling it the salt? It's not a salt, um, but we do get the concentration. It is the concentration of the salt. We just make that assumption, and that's that bit here. We're going to make the assumption that that's that, and that equals H plus. So essentially, um, now if you've been able to work out the pH already, go ahead and do that, please. Um, remember you need to minus log the hydrogen ion concentration so what we want to do here is we want to go acid over salt so 0 0.4 over 0 0.6 I'm not going to bother with all the moles per decimeter um, and I want to times the Ka so 1.6 times 10 minus 4 that's the Ka times the acid over the salt concentration. The salt concentration, I've made the assumption, is the same as the methanoate ions, the ions of the salt. And that's going to um, equals um, the H plus. And then what I want you to do is minus log in your calculator. Press minus, press the log button. I mean, really, it's to the 10, base 10, but you, you don't need to worry about the base 10 bit. And then just whack in your hydrogen ion concentration and you're sorted so let's have a go at that and hopefully um, yeah I don't mash it up right <clears throat> times bracket 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.6 close bracket equals that's my hydrogen ion concentration should be like um, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 essentially um, and then I'm going to minus log answer and it should be 3.97 the pH so if you got that well done um, and for this one I can open my my PGC ebook you won't be able to really see that's PGCE. I've never heard of that. That's my post. Uh, that was my teaching qualification. Right. And yeah, that's the calculation they give you in the AQA buffers book. And they give you in the OCR the exact same calculation as this. Unfortunately, they're all going to be a lot harder than this. So let's do some of the really sick hard ones. OK. Here we go. Five marker. Let's rock. Okay. So a buffer solution is made by adding two grams. Notice straight away they're giving us grams. You're like, what the fudge? Okay. So the CGPE just gives you the concentrations. You do want what we just did. Um, CGP. I call it CGE. I swear I'm going bonkers. But you do really want to follow that basic buffer method. But they're going to make it really hard for you to come up with the concentration of the hydrogen ions and the concentration of the salt, or the, sorry, the concentration of the acid and the concentration of the salt. They're going to throw some obstacles in the way. And straight away, we've got an obstacle here. A buffer solution is made of two grams of sodium hydroxide, and it's added, this sodium hydroxide, this base, is added to 500 centimeter cubed of ethanoic acid solution. Calculate the pH of the buffer at 25 degrees, where the Ka is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. So my first way of working this out is let's get that buffer expression down first of all and then let's start calculating those concentrations. Yep, right. Let's go. Just had to have a bit of water. Okay. So um, remember, we're going to hopefully you start to realize that you want you can just do it like this if you want, because I can't be bothered to write all those symbols out. If I rearrange the Ka, 
okay it's going to end up being acid over salt and you can just if you don't like all of that how do we rearrange it which i spent ages on just memorize for buffers you do acid divided by the salt that's it and that times the ka gives you the h plus and then of course we want to minus log the h plus to get the ph simples so you can just memorize that but they've made it a little bit harder so we fight uh, we want to work out what our <clears throat> we want to work out what our situation is here so we've got two grams of sodium hydroxide um and we've got one mole of ethanoic acid so let's get into it How many moles of sodium hydroxide have I got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have sodium ethanoate, it's going to break down into ethanoate ions plus sodium. That's right. It's going to be a full arrow rather than a reversible symbol. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sodium ethanoate fully breaks down into ethanoate ions. Now, I've got sodium hydroxide here. So um, we might be thinking, but hold on a minute, that's not sodium methanoate. I don't get it. Remember, the sodium hydroxide, this is where they're making it harder. The sodium hydroxide is going to react with the sodium methanoate, and it's going to form the exact same moles of sodium methanoate, which is then going to dissociate into the methanoate ions, which is the salt. So I need to find out my moles of sodium hydroxide, then I'll know how many moles of salt I've got or ethanoate ions. So let's work out my moles of sodium hydroxide. How do I do that? Well, I need to use mass, your old fashioned one, over MR times moles. So we're going to go two. Now, I know some people might say to me, sir, sodium is 23.1. I'm not going for that level of uh, detail here. So two divided by 40. What's the 40? The 40 is the MR of sodium hydroxide. I need to find out how many moles I've got of sodium hydroxide. So 2 over 40. Why 40? Sodium's 23, oxygen's 16, hydrogen's 1. Um, so that's going to give me 0 0.05 moles. Right? I use a N for number of moles. That gives me the sodium hydroxide. But this bit might be a bit confusing for you. You're like, why have they given me a strong base? We didn't do nothing about that. Well, that is going to equal my moles or that's going to equal my, um, yeah, my sodium hydroxide moles is going to equal my um, salt. Why? Because the sodium hydroxide is going to react and form the sodium methanoate. So, um, what do we do next? Hold on. You work on that. Pause one sec. My front door has just gone. Quick vacation. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, 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 you'll need your calculator for this, dude. Right, so we've got 0 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide. We've also, let's work out um, 
we've been given the concentration of the ethanoic acid but let's they've given us 500 centimeters what do you think they're asking for why have they given you the volume and the concentration so what we can do is we can we've given us n over c times v and they've given us that for the ethanoic acid so what do you think they're after well they're after the moles as well they want our moles of ethanoic acid so if you remember we're going to do 500 centimeter cubed now we don't like centimeter cubed in chemistry we deal in decimeters so we'll do 500 over a thousand and this is showing you how hard this buffer stuff is you're going to get 0 0.5 decimeter cubed right and that's of our acid and we know that the concentration of the acid is one mole um, 1.00 got it's long writing out mole dm minus 3 you can just write a capital M but then that might confuse people so um, 0 0.5 times 1 guess what this is how many moles of acid we've got we've got 0 0.5 times 1 I've got 0 0.5 moles of acid right now I've got 0 0.5 moles of acid and I've got 0 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide which are going to react to form the salt <coughs> water now I'm going to write a little reaction just to show you this here so um, bear with me ethanoic acid this is just showing you the difficulty of course I've got loads of variations of this go going on today so this is ethanoic acid it's going to react with the base that's chucked in there the sodium hydroxide what's it going to make well they're going to react and it's going to form sodium ethanoate as you know acid and base what do they do they form salt and water so we're going to get sodium ethanoate oh look I missed a C out sodium ethanoate plus H2O okay that's minute barely readable on the screen there but this is all one to one this reaction okay it's a one to one to one to one reaction now why did they want us to do the moles like I said five markers they don't give these buffers out in little two three markers like they do in the CGP revision guide so I have naught no I might have to clear all of this and go yeah I'm probably gonna have to clear this stuff and go again so um, mate. Ugh. and I have not I've got no room Lord of mercy right um jeez Louise man okay you're with me up to there with the moles I'm going to clear this so I've got 0 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide and 0 0.5 of acid so hopefully you're up with me till there and let me not clear the whole frame let me just get rid of this because I didn't give myself enough room so the difficulty here is we do want to get to the bit where we're doing the concentrations but this is what you're going to find with all of these acid base questions and this is the bit that really gets people with these buffer questions sorry is that you've got to do a bit of subtraction to work out how much of the acid you've got left so what happens when a base and an acid react well we get a neutralization reaction and we're going to get sodium ethanoate Na. Remember, we, we know that's going to fully break down and release those ethanoate ions, so we're going to be cool there. But what we've got here is at the start, and I should call this start. Let's get um, da, 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 da. let's get another color here. So that's the start, and then let's go at the end. So the initial concentration, and at the end. So when we initially have this, we have naught point naught these aren't concentrations by the way and I use that but these are moles so how did you know that we had to calculate moles well they gave you grams and the moment they give you grams you do the MR you've got the moles of the sodium hydroxide you've been given the volume and the concentration of the ethanoic acid so it's standard like to think oh they go in the triangle let me get the moles so now we got the moles before we know that the sodium hydroxide 
we know this is a one to one to one yeah to one reaction right so how many moles of sodium ethanoate are going to be formed well what's the maximum amount of sodium atoms there are there well there's 0.05 moles of sodium atoms so i can only make 0.05 moles of sodium ethanoate right i can't make any more moles than that how many of these acid molecules over here were used up to make those sodium ethanoate molecules so afterwards cheese i shouldn't put that there should i uh let's drag that down so this is afterwards i'm going to have 0 0.05 of sodium ethanoate and of course if we assume this is the assumption we make with buffers uh we assume that all of it's formed the salt and then we're going to assume that the salt breaks down into those ions um that looks like on that's actually supposed to be zero moles but um yeah that, that looks a bit dodged let's just leave that blank because that looks like i've written on there um how many moles will i have of acid left so can anyone tell me how many moles of acid would be left after 0 0.05 of the base have reacted with it in a one-to-one -one reaction And um, if you're thinking to yourself, take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05, well then, you know what? You absolutely smashed it. Yeah, then you've smashed it because at the end of the day, that's exactly what we got to do. We got to go 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05. We have 0 0.5. Four or five moles of the ethanoic acid left afterwards. So you're always going to have this situation where um, you got to subtract moles. Sometimes people, all, there's other questions which we're going to do later on where people say, oh, you've got your buffer. Now you add a base to it. What happens? Or now you add acid to it. And you have to remember to increase the acid, decrease the moles of base and vice versa. So we're going to look at that now. Now, I want to put this in my equation I can turn this I can either do this right this is just to show you something here yeah well done guys well done awesome with a 0.45 listen what we can do now is we can bung this in the old um, equation right you remember the old equation it's ka and remember I said it's acid if you can't be bothered it's not ka equals I need to get rid of that it's ka times acid over salt and that's going to give us the hydrogen ion concentration um guess what do i need to change this these brackets stand for concentration do i need to change this into concentration only if the volumes are different but check this that's a ratio so i could actually use moles or concentration okay i um i can if you want we can divide by 0 0.5. What is it? Um, if I want to put these into concentration, I can do that. Or I, So I can either do this. I can go, right, I've got 0 0.45 of acid. Divide it by 0 0.05, which is the salt. How do I know my salt is 0 0.05? Um, yeah, because we worked that out here. But actually, this would actually be the, it wouldn't be the salt. This would be the ions of the salt, or this would be the, um, ethanoate ions but I'm just being a bit simple by writing it there and then we're going to times that by the Ka what do you guys get the Ka again is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 for the ethanoic acid so see if you can do that calculation and then when you get your answer that's the hydrogen ion concentration which we normally write um, out or you know some people just whack it all in the calculator it's better to write it, it out step by step so you can pick up some of the marks if you've screwed up so if we go 0 0.45 divided by 0 0.05 we're going to get 9 and we're going to go 9 times the ka which is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 and you should get your h plus should be Ka is the acid dissociation constant and um, 
so it's a constant for every every different acid has a different ka at the same temperature but it's specific to the temperature so this is ethanoic acid and in all the exam questions you do this is the most common weak acid for them to use and it's ka at 25 degrees is always 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 so it's specific for ethanoic acid but if it was methanoic acid at 25 degrees it'd be a different ka it may be higher or it may be lower so it depends on the acid but they are all specific to a temperature you'll always be given the k well you won't always be given the ka they sometimes might want you to calculate it but it's a constant okay so what you should get that's the hydrogen ion concentration please correct me if i got it wrong because it wouldn't be the first time and then we will get we will um zing the answer here with the old minus log what do you guys get if you minus log you don't need to press 10 you just press minus log and then you put that in what's the ph you guys get on your calculators just so i can check you're all doing it okay so if i do that we should get um 3.80 um yeah 3.80 some people might want to round that to 3.81 um yeah and that's a five marker so um the difficulty being with this buffer calculation was literally that you've got to appreciate that the base reacts with the acid and your moles of acid decrease okay um Another fact here to watch out for is I could have, if I wanted, divide these moles over volume. If I want, I could divide these by the volume, which is 0 0.5 decimeters, which is 500 centimeters cubed. Same as saying 0 0.5 decimeters. I could have turned them into concentration. Why doesn't it matter if I use the moles or the concentration? I'll tell you why it doesn't matter, because my volume is the same. So 0 0.45 divided by 0 0.5 over, you know, it doesn't matter. I can cancel this out because the volumes are the same. So I could actually just use the moles. You can change it into the concentration. You get the exact same answer because it's a ratio of the acid over the salt times the Ka. Coolio. Um, there are situations where you definitely need to use moles instead of concentration. And that's especially when the volumes are different for each. Um, right let's check this question out this is a yeah that's it 1.56 um, yeah I think it was hold on what was it 1.56 times 10 to the minus 4 I believe and then minus log that I just whacked it in let's have a look what was it 1.56 times 10 to the minus 4 is actually 1.566, but um, yeah. Cool. Now for this one, check this one out. This is even harder. Six mark buffer question. So you go out your way to try and find an easy one. You won't. Student prepared a buffer by making 0 0.0136 moles of a salt, Kx, algebraic here, to 100 centimeter cubed of a 0 0.5 mole per decimeter solution of weak acid, and they mix thoroughly. Okay, so they're reacting together. Uh, the student then added 3.3 times 10 to the minus 4 of potassium hydroxide to the buffer solution. Right, guys, is potassium hydroxide an acid or an alkali? What do you reckon? Potassium hydroxide, acid or alkali? Boom! <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Potassium hydroxide is alkaline. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to write a little equation out. All right, awesome. So we're going to write a little equation out, right? Um, the student made a buffer solution with a salt to a weak acid. So look, we've got our weak acid, HX. Um, and then we've got our salt okay oh then they're going to add their they're adding potassium hydroxide actually so um 
cool. Um, ba, 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 ba. What do we want to do? What I want to do first of all is say, how much have I got? I've got 0 0.0136 moles of my salt. How many moles of acid have we got? So with these ones, you're dealing in moles, which they don't tell you in the CGP. You're often dealing with the moles. I've got 100 centimetres of 0.5 moles of a weak acid HX. Can anyone work out what that is in moles? And you need to use the formula N for number of moles over C times V. Let's work out our moles of weak acid. Bit of water. How do I work out the moles of my weak acid? I know I've got 100 centimetres of 0 0.5. How do I do C times V? So for my moles of weak acid, I've got to do 100. Can I use centimetre cubed? No. I've got to divide by 1,000. You could just do that in your head and say it's 0 0.1. Um, and then I'm going to multiply that by the concentration of the acid. So I'm doing concentration times volume, 0 0.5 mole per decimeter. Okay, and that's going to give me, let me just write mole per decimeter down there. Yeah, so it's, it's instead of sodium hydroxide, it's potassium, but you're right, actually. So what we're doing really is just writing our moles beforehand, but you're absolutely right, yeah. So um, we're going to get X minus, right? And we're going to get uh, whatever else. What was it? H plus or whatever else. Uh, what have I done here? I don't even know what I've done here, to be honest with you. Um but yeah, this equation isn't looking very uh, viable at the moment uh, that I've done. But essentially, if we forget this equation bit, because I'm not looking liking the way I've written this out, we work out the moles of the acid. This is what I say about sometimes screwing up my lives. Right, 0 0.1 times 0 0.5. We're going to get 0 0.9 mole per decimeter of the acid. So beforehand. I've got 0 0.05 moles of the acid and I've got 0 0.036 moles of my salt. So actually, my salt's going to fully dissociate. Let's get rid of this dumbness that I've got here. And let's write this all in uh, an equation, which would be a much handier way to represent it. Uh, thanks for the last person in the chat. Um, for putting that instead of KOH you're absolutely right so this is what's going on we've got potassium hydroxide reacting but before we say um, uh, blah 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 whatever um, what's that H2O duh, 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 duh. yeah that's going to make KX there we go Okay, this makes a little bit more sense now. Uh, we already have, before this reaction takes place, they've told us we already have 0 0.0136 moles of Kx. Okay, this is at the start. So this is before, remember I put a little S before, this is at the start. Can someone do the lovely calculation for me and work out, well, how many moles of acid, use the same thing we did last time, how many moles of acid will I have and how many moles of salt will I have if they've added 3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of KOH? So they've now added into the mix um, 3 times 10 to the minus 4. So we want to say they've added... Zero 
point zero oh gosh I'm just gonna write three times ten to the minus four so how many moles will I have of salt there's a reason why people do that it saves you having to write three zeros okay so okay we finally got there how much acid will be left at the end guys and how much salt will have gone look at the potassium here what's going to happen these potassium ions are going to react and join with the x to form more kx so i want my kx to go up my potassium hydroxide will all be gone why because there's more acid 0 0.05 instead of 0 0.00 um, three, uh, 0 0.0003 of KOH. So that's all going to get wiped out. But some of my acid's going to get wiped out, right? Because the K, the potassium here, is going to join with the X and the H is going to join with the OH to form water. So some of my acid has got wiped out. So I need to decrease my moles of acid and increase my starting moles of KX that they gave me. So can you work out by how much did my acid go down so we need to say, well, it's 0 0.05 to start with. We calculated that already. And the KOH is going to react with it. The base is going to react with the acid and neutralize some of that acid. So we're going to do 0 0.05 minus 3 times 10 to the minus 4. And that's going to give us 0. Ooh, I'm on the old spotlight rather than something for writing in. That's going to give us 0 0.0497. You might say, well, what's happened there? Well, we added this, ba this base has neutralized that acid. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, so we don't need to multiply it by two or anything. So I'm down to, that's the most crap. I might as well type that because there's no way anyone can see that. So that is 0 0.0497 moles left of my acid I'm gonna have zero moles left of my base how do I know there'll be zero well because it's a base it's all of it reacts with the acid the acid is in excess so I've got acid left over how much salt will I have then well we already had 0 0.0136 moles of salt so how much extra moles have been of salt have been formed from the hydroxide that we added well 3 times 10 to the minus 4. So I need to do 0 0.0136 and I need to add 3 times 10 to the minus 4. So what you need to do here and that's gone to 0 0.0139 because we've added 0 0.00003 um, moles of Kx. So when they do these buffer calculations, they give you the ability to work out how much salt and acid you have at the start. And then they say they've added something and you've got to work out that a reaction has taken place. And you need if, if someone's added a base, then your moles of acid that you started with are going to go down and your moles of salt are going to go up because someone's added a base. So it's going to neutralize some of the acid. So that's going to go down. That's going to go up. And what we do now is we put this into our equation again um, if I want I can divide by 0 0.1 to put into concentrations um, but if the volume of the whole if it says assume the volume hasn't changed it doesn't say that but um, the volume will have actually changed but normally we assume that the volume doesn't change and because of that instead of dividing by 0 0.1 it's going to be the same. It's just a ratio. So let's work that out now. So we're going to have, we want to write our buffer equation. Can anyone work out the pH of this buffer? Let's see if you can get ahead of me as I type it all out. So we're going to put our acid. Remember, uh, I won't, our acid is going over our salt. We're actually really it's actually not really the salt it's really x minus but we're assuming it's the same as the salt so acid concentration over the salt um, if the volume is the same for these bad boys we can just use um, we can just use the moles 
So you will often in your buffer calculations need to calculate the moles of your salt and acid instead of just relying on concentration. Okay. And then you want to minus log um, the hydrogen ion concentration. God, I can't even speak that. Right. Yeah. Like that. Um, I mean, again, you can write minus log 10, whatever, base 10. So um, see if you can work that out. So uh, let's have a go. We've got to go 0 0.0139 divided by um, 0 0.0497. And that gives me um, 0 0.28 or 0 0.279. I'm then going to multiply that by the Ka, which is 1.41 um, times 10. So you hit that times 10 button on your calculator, and then you just type in minus 5. And this should give us a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.94. Um, That's supposed to be a time sign. Times 10. I'm better off typing this. I don't know why I write it out. Times 10 to the minus 6. Now we want to minus log that. And get the pH. And that's worth 6 marks. Um, ba, 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 ba. So, anyone been able to work out the pH? Let's. Hmm, that doesn't sound right to me. Where have I gone wrong? Hmm, that don't sound right. I think I may have made a mistake. Yeah, that might be a mistake there. Let me check. I should have, he says. <laughs> new, new. You'd like to think I'd actually write the answer down somewhere, wouldn't you? I'd like to think I did. But I didn't. Tell me I wrote the answer somewhere. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Um. How did I work out the hydrogen ion concentration? I screwed that right up. Mm, probably because I didn't divide. I must have put something in wrong there. Oh, I've done this. So I always make a jackass mistake here. Um. Did I do not point? I bet you I've done this. I've done this before where I don't write down the. <laughs> yeah, sorry about your ears there, dude. Um, right. The acid is 0 0.0497. I need to divide that by 0 0.1 ton, put it in the concentration and then put the salt, which is 0 0.0139 moles of my salt fully dissociated and the volume is 0 0.1 let's try it like that okay and then if I go divided by Uh-huh. 
what was my ka 1.41 times 10 to the minus 5 i hope i put the right ka yeah so yeah look there we go it is all good but i wrote the wrong answer here i knew straight away it was wrong when it came out with a ph of 5.4 i thought what the hell that's that's a little bit for a weak acid buffer that's not quite right so let's go it is 5.04 times 10 to the minus 5 don't you just love buffer calculations so now i need to minus log that and that's going to give me the correct ph okay that'll do 4.3 does it say 2D, 2DP, so two decimal places, uh, 4 point, you actually get 4.29, you should get 4.30 as your pH. Okay, so what did I do different there? I don't know, when I did it before, I probably did a calculator error there and missed out a zero somewhere, which is what I want to do. So 4.3 is the pH. Coolio. And that's a six mark question. So again, you can see that the versions they have in like your revision guides and stuff don't cover these angles like this, which is pretty grim. Um, okay, so here's a point. I've got, I've got a couple more of these to go through, by the way. Um, but thankfully, I've avoided having an incorrect answer, which I have done before where I've just bashed up an incorrect answer and then not corrected it. But there we go. Um, a buffer solution has a constant pH, even when diluted. Use a mathematical expression to explain this. So you can dilute it as much as you like. Why does it not change the pH? You can add loads of pure water. Well, it won't change the pH. And you can just write out the expression for a buffer calculation. A buffer is a ratio, so like, if my Ka, let's pretend Ka is 2. If my, um, yeah, basically, if my, if this is 10 and this is 2, <clears throat> and I dilute these by adding loads of water, what's 2 times, so, that's not Ka, by the way. So let's pretend this is my buffer calculation. Ka times acid over salt. If it's 2 times 10 over 2, <laughs> 10 divided by 2 is 5, right? Times 2 is 10, so that's going to be 10. Well, if I, if I double it by adding twice as much volume, so if I dilute it by adding water, well, all I've done is done that. So still equals 10. So, with buffers, you're just looking at the Ka multiplied by the ratio of the acid over the conjugate base of the acid or the ion of the salt. So, or the conjugate base of the salt. Or, sorry, yeah, the base of the salt. So, there you go. Um, it's just a ratio. So, it doesn't matter diluting. Right, here's another buffer question got another two to do and then we'll be done for tonight but like I say if you find any difficult ones do send them to me so <clears throat> this one is similar but different a buffer solution oh by the way this is uh, five marks of course you need scientific calculators for this buffer solution contains 0 0.025 moles of sodium ethanoate dissolved in 500 centimeters of 0 0.07 molar ethanoic acid so we've got a salt mixed with an acid that is your buffer solution down dealt with you could actually work out the ph of that buffer solution right there okay and in some questions they'll ask you to work out the ph and then they'll say after they've added an alkali what's the new ph so we could work out the original if we change the question we could say to ourselves let's work out the ph of this section which is the buffer and then we could work out the ph after this question doesn't want you to do that it just wants you to work out the ph at the end you could work out the pH before and the pH after if you really wanted to, but that's not what this question asks. So you could work out the delta pH or the change in pH if you want. You would just work out the pH of the buffer at the start. You'd work out the pH at the end after you've added the alkali, or actually they've added acid here. And so when we add the acid, 
you can you can write the equation out which I will do or you can just do this in your head but when you add the acid you're going to increase the amount uh, you're going to increase the moles of your acid and you're going to decrease the moles of your base or, or your salt so your acid's going to go up and your salt's going to go down uh, is what's going to happen after you've added the acid and what you should end up with is a higher hydrogen ion concentration so let's go through this equation right um, straight off without doing an equation we can just say look I've got 0 0.025 moles of salt this is my salt right at the start then I'm going to want to work out my moles of acid so let's do that first of all let's work out the moles of acid and the moles of salt we're then going to add hydrochloric acid to this and that's going to increase my acid okay so let's go moles of acid moles of salt now my moles of acid are moles of salt is 0 0.025 my moles of acid is going to be remember why I do 0 0.5 I've divided by a thousand to turn this dirty 500 centimeters over here we don't want that that has to be converted into decimeters so I've converted that into decimeters and then I multiply that by the concentration of the acid um, so you should kind of know that off by heart from GCSE so you've got volume times concentration that's going to give me my moles of acid okay if you can get to it before me awesome this is where I'm going to miss out a zero this is where with my dodgy eyesight I've got to miss out a zero oh geez right so 0 0.5 times 0, 0.0 I'm the slowest person with calculators so if you are ahead do let me know so I should be starting with 0 0.035 moles of acid and I've got 0 0.025 moles of salt well what's happened here is someone's added hydrochloric acid to this buffer what's that going to do to the moles of acid what's that going to do to the moles of salt well let's first of all work out the moles of the hydrochloric acid now if you wanted you could as these are both in 500 centimeters you could do the moles of acid over the moles of salt times the ka minus ph log and work out the ph beforehand that's not part of the question but we could do just to show you so i can go 0.03 let's let's work out the ph beforehand just for the sake of it so at the start when we've just got moles of acid moles of salt before the hydrochloric acid so before this stage let's work out the pH because someone in the uh, someone messaged me about working out delta pH delta pH is a, um, a bummer to work out but um so before this bit I've circled in blue we could work out the initial pH so what I would need to do is I'm going to need to do the Ka which is one point this is not the answer for the actual question let's check I'm not muted but this is a variation of the question you could get and it saves me having to root around I was trying to root around and find a question and I couldn't find one which asked for delta pH so what this is the Ka so I want to multiply that by my acid moles although if I want to change that into concentration I'm going to divide by 0.5 so moles over volume <coughs> gives me the concentration and then I'm going to divide that <coughs> by my moles of salt 0 0.025 over the concentration um, let's see 0 0.035 divided by 0 0.5 equals that divided by bracket 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.5 close bracket equals 
1.4 times 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. That is minus 5, isn't it? Ka, yep. Okay, so initially, my hydrogen ion concentration at the start for this buffer, that's not what this question asks, by the way. This is me just going on a long one. So I can work out the hydrogen ion concentration at the start. If you're, if you're wondering why I did those particular sums, uh, that's because for buffers, we do the Ka, which is over here, and we multiply that by the acid concentration, which I find, uh, which they've given me, actually, there. Um, anyway, so, um, and we do that by the moles of sodium ethanoate, or the uh, concentration of sodium ethanoate. So that should be a pH of 4.6. So that would be at the start. This buffer has 4.6. Let me just double check that. Anyone else, please double check it and let me know um, if there's any errors there. That would be beautiful. Right. So let's do. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all good. Yep, that's all good. So the initial pH of this buffer is 4.6. If we add hydrochloric acid to this buffer, what are we expecting the pH to do? Are we expecting the pH? All right, buffer solutions, they resist the change in pH. So it shouldn't change by much, but are we expecting our answer to go down or up? What do you think, guys? Should a buffer solution go down or up in pH if you add acid? Obviously, it's going to resist and it won't be a huge change in the pH. We're going to see a small change because resist doesn't mean stop. So we're going to see a small change in the pH. Will it go down or up when you add hydrochloric acid? Well done if you spotted the, um, the pH. You're going to be adding more hydrogen ions. So the pH is going to go down. It's going to become more acidic. You absolutely smashed it. Yeah, well done if you got that. So um, let's, let's actually answer the bloody question now, eh? Right, we've added moles of acid. So what I want to do is find out how many moles of acid have we added? And that's going to change which part of our equation. Well, it's going to change both parts. It's going to change the amount of salt we get formed. And it's going to change the amount of acid we have. So let's work out how much acid we're adding. We're adding a really high concentration, actually, 2 mole per decimeter. But it's only 5 centimeters. Um, does it say assume this doesn't change the volume? It doesn't. So our volume is actually going to be a... Um, it's actually going to go up to 505 centimeters cubed, but pff, whatever. We can do it with moles instead. So we can just do moles and get rid of the volume, the whole dividing by 505 if we want. We should get the same answer, but we can work it with both. So let's work out our moles of hydrochloric acid. So if I do 5, we need to change 5 centimeters into decimeters. How do you change centimeters into decimeters? You absolutely smashed it. Yeah, that's not getting annoying, is it? Um, you just divide by a thousand. So if you divide five centimeters by a thousand, you're going to get, he says, not relying on his mental maths at this time of night, we're going to get 0 0.005 decimeters of hydrochloric acid. Why, oh, why don't I type? Uh, we're going to times that by the concentration, which is 2, so 2 mole per decimeter, and that's going to give us 
hopefully stop me at any point if this has gone pear shaped and you've spotted that that's going to give us 0 0.01 moles of hydrochloric acid so what do i need to do to my numbers well my acid up here which i had 0.035 it's going to go up by 0 0.01 so my acid might have to move my face i'm going to move my face people i know terrible going to move my face where it will do least harm up here for now all right coolio so it's giving me a little bit more working out space so my acid i'm going to need to add to my acid concentration which was 0 0.035 i need to add 0 0.01 moles right because i've just added hcl how do i know that that's going to increase the acid concentration well it's it's a strong acid it fully dissociates notice they added a strong base in the last one koh this time they're adding a strong acid why do they add strong acids or strong bases in the questions because it's easy for you to assume that that's going to increase the hydrogen ion concentration by that many moles so we're going to take our acid up to naught point naught four five I've now got 0 0.045 moles of acid, right? That's my total acid. Now, what's it going to do to my salt? Well, yikes. Um, my salt is going to decrease by 0 0.01. So I need to take my salt down. Do you know the only issue I have with my crappy writing is that is a dot and that is supposed to be a dot. I'm, I've got to stop all this scribbling and start typing because some dodgy thing there, right? Um, so my salt is basically going to go from 0 0.025 to 0 0.015 and that is the salt or let's, yeah, that's going to go to 0 point naught one five you're probably like what the hell by now so my new equation getting rid of all of this over here my new equation rather than the previous one we're going to write it like this we're going to say it's naught point naught four five these are the new concentrations over zero point zero one five Hopefully you all understand that. Yes, Azra, adding the strong acid increases the hydrogen ion concentration. We add the weak acid, it will give. Um, yeah, so, right, Azra. So the weak acid and the, ba -ba 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 -ba, the salt are what made the buffer. The bit I've circled in blue is what happened after what we did to the buffer so we added the acid to the buffer the buffer was already made with the weak acid and the buffer was made with the salt of the weak acid so the ethanoic acid and the sodium ethanoate we've then done the whole prove that a buffer can resist this is a, a, a calculation to prove that buffers can resist a change in ph you've just dumped in five centimeters of very strong hydrochloric acid into this solution we want to show that the ph doesn't change much so what we've got to do is we've got to increase our acid concentration so it's like the hydrochloric acid combines with the ethanoic acid to just form a big pool of acid so to speak so we just go 0 0.045 and then we do that over the top of our salt now our salt has decreased or our ions of the salt have decreased why why has the salt ions decreased the salt ions have decreased because they've been soaked up by the acid okay so they've gone down and they've they've gone down to 0 0.015 and we still want to multiply this by the ka which is 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5 um, and that will give us our new hydrogen ion concentration hopefully i'll get this right so okay do i need to do uh no i don't think i do so i'm taking a gamble i don't think i need to uh include the volume i don't think i need to change it into concentration right it's just the ratio of the two so if i divide them both by um 
0.505 decimeters, I'm going to get the same ratio. So I shouldn't probably have to bother with that. So then times the Ka, which is 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, on my calculator, sometimes I don't trust it. Okay, let's multiply that by 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, according to this, I get 5.28 times 10 to the minus 5. Mm, I'm not sure about that. <coughs> let's... Sometimes I have no faith in my calculator. But it makes perfect sense when we get the answer. And the answer, guys, when I... I've got to do my minus log. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to write it all out again. But basically, once you get that H plus concentration, you want to minus log that on your calculator. And we get a pH of 4... 0.277 so I can round that to 4.28 have a look it's exactly as we predicted we've added acid the pH has gone down a bit but it hasn't gone down that much so it's gone down from 4.6 to 4.28 if I wanted to find delta pH or the change in the pH take the original pH subtract this one and the delta pH or the change in the pH would have been uh, 0 0.32 and that's the change in the pH so that was an actual like five mark question if they'd ask you to calculate the change in pH that'd be like a six or seven mark question okay so always remember you have a buffer with the salt and the weak acid and then they'll add an acid or add an alkali in a lot of these questions and you've got to move one up one of the set of moles that you've calculated up and the other one down for the reaction depending on if you've added acid your acid moles increase and your salt moles decrease if you've added a base then your acid moles decrease and your moles of salt ions will increase. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that is our final pH. Off, but the buffer's pH was this. This is the pH of the buffer solution, 4.60. The pH after we add the hydrochloric acid is 4.28. Now, I don't know if you guys study AQA or OCR or... Um, but all depends on which ones you do. So uh, this thing over here is a slightly different style of question. All right. Um, this is one from the OCR exam board here. The student makes a buffer solution pH 4. This is a six marker um, from ethanoic acid. Surprise, surprise. And sodium ethanoate. Surprise, surprise. They're absolute favorites. The student mixes 400 centimeters of 0.204 mole per decimeter of ethanoic acid with 600 centimeters of sodium ethanoate. Calculate the concentration. Ah, this is a variation. Calculate the concentration of sodium ethanoate needed to prepare this buffer solution of pH 4. So... What I would do in this situation where you're like, wow, haven't had this one before, always start by writing the equation for the buffers out. You can, if you want, write, um, sorry, write the expression for calculating the pH of a buffer. And then you'll kind of get yourself into position. So how does that show up? Okay, it's all right. Ka, we want to do the Ka, remember. Now I can write acid over salt, but... Maybe I'll, um, so I'm going to write the acid. You can just write acid. You can just memorize it's Ka times acid over the salt. It's actually not the salt. You're actually doing it over the sodium ethanoate ions. Remember the assumption? We assume the salt fully dissociates. So we're actually doing that. And what have they asked us to do in this calculation? They've asked us and said, we don't calculate the concentration of this. So they want to know that. <clears throat> okay. And that equals H plus. So you could start like that and go, oh, what do I do here? So, um... <clears throat> Uh, 
if we want, we can write out the weak acid expression. And it's probably even easier if instead of writing out that, but you just want to make the acid the, um, you just want to make the salt the subject. So let's rework that and make the salt the subject. We can also, if we want, you could start with a weak acid expression uh, to make the salt the subject. So if you wanted, you could start, well, I say that is really the original expression for this. So this would be reactants over products. So we could do, oh, anyway, how are we going to rework that and make the salt? So you might find it easier to put the algebraic in a little bit quicker over the acid and say to yourself, right, this time I need to rearrange this to make A minus, which is represents our salt in this situation, represents is as the assumption is that A minus is equal to the salt concentration. So this time, how do I make A minus the subject of this equation? Well, I can, um, first of all, go Ka times the acid. So exactly what we would do normally. But this time, instead of dividing by the salt, we're going to divide by the H plus concentration like that. OK, and that's going to give us the salt. So that would be the rearrangement in this situation. Oh, bloody hell. Sorry. Um, thanks, Azra. Yeah, that was for the last one. I had to move my camera. Cheers. Thanks for that. <clears throat> Don't help, does it, when I whack my face over it? Might take me a little bit of time to read the chat sometimes. Um, cool. That's great. Thank you. So anyway, what have I done here? I basically tried to make A minus, which is the assumption is that's the same as the salt concentration, um, which is... Um, our ethanoate ions, they're going to be equal to the sodium ethanoate concentration. So I've rearranged it. And really, instead of doing acid over salt, we just do acid over the hydrogen ion concentration equals the salt. So acid over the hydrogen ions times Ka equals the salt. So now I need to work out my concentrations uh, going on here. So the student mixes. Now what I need to be careful of here is check this out. This is a key bit as well here. So we might say to ourselves, sir, can I just use the concentration? They gave me the concentration of the acid. Um, they gave me the volume of the salt. They gave me the pH, right? What I've got to be careful with here is I've got two different volumes going on. So I need to convert these into moles to make them comparable and then whack them into the equation. So how can I convert pH? Can anyone remember how am I going to work out the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, they've given us the pH. How do we turn pH into the H plus concentration? So hopefully you can remember that. So the first thing I'm coming across is they've given me the pH, right? I want to reverse that back into hydrogen ion concentration. Um, so what you're going to do when you calculate, you're going to press shift here, little in the top corner, normally top left corner when you're looking at your calculator, top right corner if, you're, if you are the calculator. So press the shift, then press log, and you get a little box. You'll get 10 with a little box next to it. Now I'll put minus into that box and the pH. So 10 to the minus the pH. And what you'll find is that gives you 1 times 10 to the minus 4. So my hydrogen ion concentration is, ooh, where are we? Hopefully we get this right. 1 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, <clears throat> my Ka, we've been given in the question, please. Yes, we have, 1.78. Uh times 10 to the minus 5. I did say I was going to type all of this, so I wasn't going to have to write all this in terribly. Let me type that in there. 
and then what you guys need to do for me is can you work out the acid concentration well it's given us the acid concentration but I want to convert that into moles I'm hoping this box here, I can write in this box. Can I write in that box? Oh, God, what was I doing there? 1.7. Hello? Oh, that's not showing up. Sod that. Right. Sorry about that, guys. That's not showing up in that text. Right. So the Ka is 1.78 times 10 to the minus 5. That's the Ka. I could have just written Ka. And I want to times that by that. <coughs> Now, my um, volume of the acid, so that's my concentration of the acid. What's my concentration of the, sorry, that's my concentration of the hydrogen ion concentration. Sorry, finally got there, what I'm actually talking about. 1 times 10 to the minus 4 is the hydrogen ion concentration. Awesome, thank you, Azra. <laughs> I got there eventually. Now, um, We've got 400 centimeters cubed of 0 0.204 mole per decimeter acid. So really what I want to do there is I've got the concentration of the acid and it is 0 0.204. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.4. You might say, well, why am I going to multiply that by 0 0.4? Well, because I've got four decimeters of it. So I need to take that into account. And over here, I've got my moles of salt times 0 0.6. That's a pretty damn hard. So that's going to equal my... Um, yeah. That's going to equal the concentration... Concentration times volume is moles, and I've got uh, concentration times volume is moles. Cool. Let's see if we can work this out and what this comes to. And then we can work out if this is correct. What a difficult, what a difficult, 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 difficult question, eh? Question, tell me what you think about... Chemistry. Come on, let's do this. Let's do it. Painful. Okay, I'm running to the toilet, guys. I'm back in 30 seconds. Um, I might refill my water. Yeah, pink cup, bit dodge, but I will refill my water. One sec.
Right, I'm back for this sick question. Okay. Right. Uh, um, yeah, where am I? <clears throat> okay, let's work this out. So, what do we got to do here? So, we can go 1.78 um, times, oops, Sugar Ray Leonard, times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, 1.78 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied. This is where I need to get my brackets out because this is where I make my mistakes when I don't use brackets. 0 0.204, yep, it was 0 0.204 times 0 0.4. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see if that works. Now, I may have this wrong. So that equals, I may have to recalculate that. So you guys might be able to put that into your calculator. And that means that 0 0.0145 equals <clears throat> 0 0.6 times A minus. So, um, yeah. Oh, let's have a look then. So therefore, if I... Do Now, that means <clears throat> that if I want to get A minus on its own, I've got to divide this by 0 0.6. I hope we get this right. And that is, I hope I get this right. I don't know about you, but if I don't get it right, I need to shoot myself. It is late, though, so I can forgive myself. 0.0242 and that is the concentration that we would need now concentration you can write a big capital fat m if you want instead of mole per dm but really modern day they just like you to write mole dm minus three i don't really want to write that <clears throat> it's all a bit long and so that should be the concentration that i require um Everybody cool with that, if anyone is still here in the chat after my break. So, you might be saying to yourself, well, sir, <clears throat> how did I get this number of 0 0.0145? Well, remember we took the original equation, we rearranged this equation just like we would for a buffer, except for this time, instead of dividing by the salt, we divided by the hydrogen ion concentration. Why did we do that? Well, they gave us the pH, and whenever you're given the pH, you can work out the hydrogen ion concentration. So we weren't being asked to find the pH. We were being asked to find the concentration of the salt that would need to be added um, to create this buffer solution. They gave us the concentration of the weak acid. However, rather than mixing the same volume of acid and the same volume of salt, they used different volumes, 400 and 600. Why did I write 0 0.4 and 0 0.6? Because I immediately want to convert those volumes into decimeters. Remember, in chemistry, we're never using centimeters. We like to use decimeters. So 400 becomes 0 0.4. We divide by 1,000, and 600 becomes 0 0.6. So I'll know that I have to include them somewhere in my calculation. Now, when I rearrange the equation, I get Ka times acid over the hydrogen ion concentration equals the concentration of salt. Now, um, I've got 1.78 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 0 0.204, which is my acid, ethanoic acid, times the volume, okay, uh, over the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So I'm just including volume here because it's relevant because they're different on both sides. Okay, If they were the same, we could just cancel them out and it wouldn't matter. So if, if I'd used 500 and 500, it wouldn't matter. We could cancel them out from both sides because they'd be identical, but they're not in this situation. So we then work that out and we get 0 0.0145 when we do this half of the calculation. So that is equal to A minus times 0 0.6. So I bring the 0 0.6 over by dividing 0 0.0145 divided by 0 0.6 and I get a concentration of 0 0.0242.
moles per decimeter hopefully so hopefully it was just about followable and then I've got one more dirty buffer calculation to go through you're all probably in bed by now but I'm gonna zip through this last one here the student plans to prepare a buffer solution that has a pH of 4.5 so again they've given us the pH uh, the buffer solution will contain ethanoic acid and sodium methanoate. Surprise, surprise. The student plans to add 9.08 grams of sodium methanoate to 250 centimeters of 0.8 mole ethanoic acid. The student assumes the volume of the solution does not change. Great. So we don't have to business. This time, we don't have to business with the whole volume of the solution thing. We don't have to convert to moles. We can just stick to using concentrations because the volume is the same for everybody so yeah we don't have to take account of the volume like we did in the last one where it was 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 the volume of our two our weak acid and our salt were different we don't have to take account of that now so straight away they're giving us the ka um, We've been given the pH. So that what have they actually asked the show by calculation whether or not the students would would form the required pH. So essentially we need to find the hydrogen ion concentration because they want us to do it and see if the pH comes out at 4.5. So this is the student's method. Does the pH come out at 4.5? So essentially we want the hydrogen ion concentration. So this is the traditional most typical uh, buffer situation. We want to take our acid, spot which one's your acid, it's the CH3COOH, that's your ethanoic acid. We want to take our acid and we want to divide that by the concentration of our salt. Again, volumes are the same, so we can probably just use moles here. Ah, we can we can times by 0 0.25 if we like. Got the volume over there. They've told us that the volume is going to be the same for everything, but some people like to uh, not do by the moles, but change it into concentration. That's fine. So we want to find the hydrogen ion concentration, and we want to uh, then compare that. Does it equal 4.5? So is it 4.5? That's what we should find out when we do this. So <clears throat> we want to do 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5. That's our Ka. We want to multiply that by the... Um, Ethanoic acid concentration, we've got 0 0.8 mole per decimeter of ethanoic acid. We can change that to moles or let's not bother. Oh gosh, I'm not going to write mole per decimeter. That's painful. Um, so there's our acid concentration. If we want, we can convert them both to moles. Um, <clears throat> see if it makes a difference. Or we can we can convert them both to moles, or we can just convert our sodium methanoate, our salt, into concentration. Or we can convert the other one to moles. It doesn't matter which. So we've got 9.08 grams of sodium methanoate. So what do we need to do? The moment they give you the old 9.8 grams, you know that you need to do mass over MR. So we want to do 908 over the MR of sodium methanoate. Ethanoate, sorry. So what's that? We've got two carbons, 12 and 12, that's 24. We've got three hydrogens, that's three, that's 27. We've got two oxygens, that's 32, so 27 and 32. 59 I think and then we've got 23 for the sodium so 23 and 59 82 hopefully I'm right so we want to do 908 divided by 82 and we're going to get 0 0.11 moles 
and that's of the salt sodium ethanoate so that's of CH3 C double O N A. Now that's moles. Now if I want to put this, if I want to put 0 0.11 there, um, well, that's not the concentration. So if I wanted to use moles for both, I could use that 0 0.11, but then I need to convert my 0 0.8 of ethanoic acid into moles by times it by 0 0.25. But if I divide that by 0 0.25, so Remember, for this kind of calculation, we need the old N over C times V, which is moles over concentration times volume. So if I do the moles, 0 0.11, divided by the volume. Now, the volume is 250 centimetres, but I need to convert that to decimetres. If I divide by 1,000, I'm going to get 0 0.25 over there. That's a quarter of a decimeter. So I'm going to divide these moles down here, 0 0.11 by 0 0.25. And that's going to give me, so if I do 0 0.11 and I divide by 0 0.25, now you might say to me, sir, why am I not dividing the 0 0.8 by it? Well, they've already given me that in moles per decimeter. So I'm converting this 0 0.11 moles into moles per decimeter. So I'm dividing the moles by 0 0.25. And what I get is 0 0.4429. I could round that to 0 0.4430. 0. Um, there we go. So that there, that is the worst ever. No one can read that. Okay. 0, 0.0. What is it? 4429 on my calculator. All right, you could round that to 0 0.04430. Okay, let's do that. Get the hydrogen ion concentration. Then let's minus log it. So 1.75 in the calculator. Hit the times 10 button. Put the minus 5 in. That's your Ka. You now want to multiply that brackets by 0 0.8 zero, 00 moles and then we want to divide that by 0 0.04429 and let's see what we get okay apparently we get um, 3.16 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, it might equal 5.01. I may well have done mine wrong. Um, if I minus log my answer... Um, I get uh, a pH of 3.0, 0, 3.50. So, um, but my calculator could have played games with me. So let me try again. Um, sometimes my calculator is a brute. So it, I have to sometimes break it down. If I go 0 0.8, and I divide that by 0 0.0, hopefully, um, 4, 4, 3. Okay, 18 times the 1.75. One thing that's good to check as well is if we do it with the moles, I got, did you get for your hydrogen ion concentration 3.16 times 10 to the minus 4? That's what I got for my hydrogen ion concentration. And that was doing it, that was doing this using the, um, that was doing that using the concentrations. We could do this using moles and it should work out the same. So if I was to use the moles, instead of timesing 0 0.8, I would do, well, I don't need to put the brackets for that. I, I could also do, alternatively, I this should equal the same answer 
for the hydrogen ion concentration I should do the Ka if I do if I want to turn the acid into moles remember the concentration was 0 0.8 of the acid the ethanoic acid I can times that by 0 0.25 and I'll get the moles of ethanoic acid in my solution, which works out as 0 0.2. Okay. <sighs> Methinks this is going to be a completely different answer, actually. 0 0.8 times 0.75 yeah if I do it in the moles probably it's a little little bit different I get 3.18 times 10 to the minus 4 if I minus log that answer if I do it with the moles I'm getting um, exactly 4.49 so I think that is probably best to convert to the moles if I do if I convert to moles I get 0 0.2 moles over 0 0.11 yeah I think so I got 4.49 which sounds 7 4.497 so if if I do this like that if we work out the moles this way I've got two answers here I think the mole way is the correct answer because it works out with a pH of 4.49 so if you do the moles convert them to moles you shouldn't have still got five you should have worked out your moles as let me move my face Okay, so if I move my face over here, um, I'm kind of running out of room here. Let's get rid of that. It's always the problem with doing lives on disgusting things like buffers. Okay, so we could have done Ka. And if we use the moles, like you said, let's do 0 0.8 times um, 0 0.25 decimeters. That will be the moles of the acid. And that was over, what did we say the moles were? I better make sure I actually use the correct accuracy. Divided by 82, hopefully my MR was right, equals 0 0.1. Keep writing at equals is times 0 0.11073. Um, try that and see what do you get then for your hydrogen ion concentration. And then you should just minus log that and that will be the answer. So if we go 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5 and we multiply that. I'm always a bit careful with my calculator. Uh times let's bracket cool divided by it's always good to write your hydrogen ion constant ah, you see I'm getting calculator error so that's the problem I have to carry if I don't carry mine all out um the correct way see what do you get if you put what I've just put in there see the 3.16 or it's 3.18 um, so but it makes a vast difference to the answer one answer is correct um, and one answer matches that pH I'm tended to go for the one that matches the pH so I'm gonna break it all down into parts because if I I don't trust my calculator to come up with it so 0 0.2 um, divided by 0 0.11073 yeah so I'm getting 1.80 I think I just made a calculator error times 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5 see 
now I'm getting 3.1608 times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, do you get that for your hydrogen ion concentration? Apparently, which is what I've got the whole time I've been doing this, is that um, if you minus log that, you get a pH of 4.50. You might get pH 4.9 and you round up. So the answer is that, yes, it is correct. Uh, the student is correct. Their method would produce the required pH. So... You can use moles, it's fine. You just got to get the moles correct. You came up with a pH of 5.01, um, which means your hydrogen ion concentration came out as 9.77. So, yeah, there was definitely a mistake there. So, um, and my mistake, I love to make mistakes in this kind of stuff, so don't mind me. My mistake here was adding an extra zero, and that would have cost me a precious mark in an exam. So it was good to work it out both ways. Both ways are correct. You can do, you can do the concentration or the moles. Both ways are correct. The most likely reason for getting one of these answers wrong if you're getting the method correct um, like you use the moles and that was the correct thing to do but you can use the concentration as well and you'll get the same answer see what I did earlier is I put an extra zero in here even though on my calculator I'd worked out the moles correctly I just needed to do 0 0.11 divided by 0 0.25 and instead I added an extra imaginary zero in which is easy to do so you can do it concentration wise, 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.44 um, or 4429, whatever. And you're going to get the same multiplier of 1.8 that you then multiply by 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5. You're going to get the same hydrogen ion concentration roughly. And then um, When I do it with the concentration, I get 4.497, so it might seem a little more accurate, but realistically, that's just the calculator doing its own business, because I haven't rounded when I do that way. Um, and then you'd round that up, say, so yeah, the, the student's correct, you'd round that up to 4.50. So, yes, the student is correct. 4.97 or 4.50, they are correct with the pH on this one. Okay, so... Um, Yeah, what I reckon's happening is you're getting some calculator error. You're adding an extra zero in your calculator or you're putting times 10 to the minus 4 or times 10 to the minus 6. Or when you put 1.75 in at the bottom, sometimes what people do is when they're going to put the KA in, instead of hitting times 10 button down the bottom, they might physically put in times 10 to the minus 5. And you get a completely, that gives you 12.5. So um, sometimes if you don't use the times 10 button at the bottom there, uh, whatever it is, X, EXP or whatever that button is called, um, yeah, then that can screw you up as well. So just make sure you're using the correct buttons on the calculator. And that's buffers for you. Now, if you're doing any exam papers or you get any homeworks on buffers and you have any difficult questions, you can always send a link, send them to me, email me at letsgettothemarks at gmail.com. Um, and so that's L-E-T-S, uh, G-E-T, get, and then two, T-O, and then the, T-H-E, and then marks, M-A-R-K-S, and then at gmail.com. You can email me any question or homework you've got or something that you're baffled on, and I can go through it with you. So the correct answer here is that the student has got the correct pH. This, their method is suitable to create the correct pH. Now, we can either use the moles method or we can use um, 
we can either use the moles method where we just do 0 0.2 moles of acid over 0 0.11 moles of salt. Um, that should, again, another little error there, that should be times. And that will give you a hydrogen ion concentration down here of that. Or you can do this method where you use the concentrations and you'll get the same answer. Why will you get the same answer? Because the volume was the same for both. So 250 centimeters. They didn't have different volumes. So you can use the moles or you can use the concentration. So yeah, you've probably done a calculator error there. Um, anyway, don't worry. The great thing with these is they're five, six marks. You'll pick up lots of marks on the way. These are definitely A star questions, the buffers calculations or the buffer calculations. And they're one that you really, really need to practice lots. And then if you're like me, you'll lose the ability to do them over time. I've been teaching chemistry for 25 years and biology A-level for 25 years. And I'll still lose the knack of doing buffers and I'd have to practice it. So this is the kind of thing you want to be able to do and know I can do it. And then when it comes to the exams and you're in your revision period, you definitely put aside some time before the exam. It's one of your key topics that you're going to revise in the in the couple of days before the exam so that it's all refreshed in your head but you definitely need to put the hours in and put the graft in with a level there's no quick way around a level it's a lot of hard work so yeah anyway i hope that help helps and um yep that's it for buffers i may do another video with a whole load more buffers when I search for buffer questions from OCR, AQA or Edexcel, there are hundreds and hundreds of buffer questions. So I would say the likelihood of you getting a buffer question in your A-level exam is very, very high. Um, you're definitely going to get a, questions, a question on acid and base. So you're going to probably be asked to calculate the pH of a strong acid, a weak acid, and then you'll either be given KW, um, which I did in another live, or you'll be given buffers. So you really need to be an expert on this topic. The questions are worth a lot of marks, like you get 15 mark questions, and the buffer part to it might be six or seven marks. So the other stuff where you're just calculating pH, or you're writing a bit of theory about acids, what's the definition of an acid, what's the definition of a base, um, they make up the other marks, some easy marks. So everyone can score marks on acid base questions, but if you want to get the top, top, top marks, you need to be getting almost or all of it maximum on the buffer part okay no problems at all um yeah no problems at all no problems at all all right i'm probably going to do another one where i don't go over the theory of buffers i just go straight through calculation 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 um just on buffers so all right nice one yeah take care and um, remember to share, like, and all of that business. And when you start college again in September, make sure you let people know. Uh, more people in the, uh, the chat, the better, the more people that I can help. All right, nice one, guys. Take care. Good luck. And, um, yeah, that's it. We're done. So uh, thank you very much. And if you manage to sit all the way through that, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs>